outside trip. Want to tour the guy for a couple minutes? Congratulations, you found the Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Well, what do you know? It's time to go. Listen to the Twin Cities Hit Show. Ladies and germs, it's showtime! Reach for this one. <laughs> and now, a real hit show. Okay, people, it's showtime! All right, everybody, it's showtime. All right, everybody, it's showtime! Take your position. It's showtime. Live from the Twin Cities. All right, here we go. Hold your ears, folks. It's showtime. It's the Twin Cities hit show. Don't say it, please. Don't say it. No, I have to say it, Mitch. Showtime. Let's get this hit show started. Well, it is showtime, isn't it? Oh, my God. Showtime. Show you two? How long were we on? <laughs> oh, like 12 and a half minutes. No. I glance over. Courtney's sitting there quietly. I see the on air. I'm like, uh, oh, I guess we're on. No, I motioned to you, and I told everybody, it's 930. Let's do this. I'm throwing you both under the bus. You're both idiots. You're both fired. Hey, it's the Twin City sh- <laughs> Hit Show with Chuck Gollop only. <laughs> Everyone turns it off. Yo. Hey. Happy Friday, everyone. We made it to Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. We made it to episode 40. This show is officially over the hill. Yeah. Just like you, Rusty. Oh. Thank you. Hey, snowflakes outside. <laughs> How about that? I was going to say, I'm so excited. I get out my winter gear finally. Mm. And don't look. It was such a luscious spring. Don't look yeah. to the side of the studio here, but Sean Bernard is in here. What? And he's creepily Don't filmy. look. He's, don't look. Oh, oh, he's oh. upskirting me. He'll turn he's you into stone. videotaping. Or... There's flakes in the inside, too. Oh. What? Do oh. you guys like comedy? <laughs> <laughs> when does it start? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> just uh, you saw the door open. You thought you'd just come on in. Yeah, I figured I'd come on in and then videotape you guys for a little bit. So people I love can it. See I wish I would know. So wackiness. I would have put on some makeup. Yeah, Do you gonna... usually slap on a little makeup uh, in the morning? Yeah, I slap on some makeup, but not today. I do as well, you're but not today. Fine. I think Aww, you're still fine. You're sweet. Thank you. Are you still with Tinder Guy? I am still with Cello Guy, is yeah. now we're calling him. Oh, he's, yeah. oh, that's, uh, he's been know, upgraded. He's really, Cello Guy. It's a little easier yeah. to tell your Sean, folks. Sean, we are in <laughs> love. You are? Yes. Oh, it's so stupid, but awesome. That's so cool when you can start out with sex and then you're like we love each other <laughs> that's so we... cool that the sex works and then we found out like who each other are after right. that <laughs> who could date oh. after that we yeah there's i don't know there's just a lot of great <laughs> turning there's red. a lot of great give and take she ruined the bit though we wanted her to have oh, many dates I and did she falls in love with the first yeah. jello guy she runs into what I mean, a loser you know, it's also the honeymoon phase so we'll see we'll see yeah. it'll end like everything else yeah so exactly everything I decays everything Chuck. decays Why so we have snow Snowflakes out the window, but uh, oh, down in Chicago and Illinois, that yeah, four alarm fire, no <laughs> tornadoes overnight, oh. lots and lots in of Chicago? tornadoes, yeah. uh, just outside of Chicago. Ooh. And uh, Dang. well, uh, let's see, they had a couple of cities were like almost devastated last night, so oh. huge, huge uh, tornadoes down there. So we are heading into, even though we have snow outside our windows. They said as many as 14 tornadoes were reported in rural Midwest on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Large, dangerous twister tore th- across fields in Iowa. A, twi- t- a twister, twister touched down 70 miles outside of St. Louis. Uh, there were tornadoes reported in Oklahoma, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I found this guy on the Internet, and I think he's a, a frustrated weather guy. And I think he's uh, he might be a little... S- Disabled, should I say? But anyway, here's his weather report. This is Frankie McDowell, my own TV station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Severe thunderstorms headed towards Arkansas on Thursday, April 9th, 2015. It's going to bring 30 plus millimeters of rain. It's going to bring chain lightning, very loud thunder, and maybe some damage winds and large hail. In the state of Arkansas, especially guy. in Little Rock, Arkansas, really it's going to be a lot of thunder and lightning. It's going to be heavy downpours, maybe some wind driven rain. I want him to be my weather Arkansas guy. On Thursday, April 9th, 2015, it's going to bring like... a lot of thunder and lightning. It's going to bring He doesn't heavy stop, rain. by the way. This goes on for about 10 back up minutes. In the of Arkansas, especially in Little Rock, Arkansas, <laughs> and the surrounding areas. 
sets a warm and humid air coming all the way from the Gulf of Mexico in a cool and breezy <laughs> anyway, air coming all the way from the northern United States. He loves States. his weather. I like him. Two air so, clash together. Uh, is my mic on? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we hear you. You can. Hear, yeah. Is that you, Rusty? Yeah. Come closer. <laughs> um, I went to I went to Brown many years ago. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna say the guy's Bragger. name, even though it's probably not very nice. But so this guy that was trying to become a DJ, here's how he sounded. <laughs> Mad Dog Matt Dankel. <laughs> so everybody made I would fun listen of him. to him, too. Everybody made fun of him all the time. Mad Dog Matt Dankel. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's like Mr. Upward Inflection. This guy, by the way, he hasn't stopped his weather report. Arkansas. He's still <laughs> going. People in Arkansas, be prepared. He's still Thank going. Ready, ready, anyway. Ready, 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 ready. So uh, also uh, relatively uh, breaking news from overnight, I guess. Uh, it was a secret that's been kept for more than a year. Did you guys hear that uh, Barry Manilow secretly got married oh, yeah. a year ago? To a lizard? <laughs> to a man. Don't be oh, to a man, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He didn't want to tell anyone that he was gay. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've, I've, I've got to... <laughs> kind of laugh with that. That was great. <laughs> I interviewed him a couple of times, and I always wanted to say, how come we never... You sing about love, but we know nothing about your love life. Because yeah. we never did all these years. Oh, I, mean, I think we did, of, Rusty. I think we did. <laughs> but unlike Elton John, yeah. who was very vocal and out there with his yeah. relationships, Barry Manilow, you never saw him with anyone. Yeah. But, but he Elton sang about John love. also said he was bisexual for a really long time. Well, he was married to a woman at a moment. Oh, okay. That's lame. Elton John. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know anything. Anywho. <laughs> so they are saying, let's see, Barry Manilow marries his manager... Uh, Gary Keefe, and it oh, happened. Oh, how Celine Dion of him. Barry and Gary. <laughs> Barry and Gary. They oh. said it was a surprise. They were the burner. Twenty to thirty guests said they were going to a lunch, and then lo and behold, Barry and Keefe came out wearing uh, their wedding outfits and got married. Burn so they've been married. G- Gary is spelled with two R's, just oh. like Barry. Barry and Gary. I wonder if they. Oh my God, we can call them the Bee Gees. Well, I get it. I don't follow. Now I'm just imagining <laughs> him singing these songs in like a, a pink leotard. Each one of these songs. <laughs> when you're sad. Oh, my God. Everybody listening to this concert. is like, hey, Grandma, <laughs> we got something on the podcast for you. I wait, oh, Okay. Grandma's listening. Okay. I got something else for Grandma then. Here we go. <laughs> in concert this weekend at the X. Oh, awesome. Grandma's still listening, right? Yeah. Oh, Will yeah, Ferrell totally. as Neil Diamond? Yeah. Awesome. At the XL, Sunday, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Where they get? Get in the room here, Grandma. Come sing with us. <laughs> I love your song. <laughs> he was the Jewish but Elvis to me. <laughs> That's That's he, he did get billed as that. I, uh, I bone him. <laughs> wasn't a spring. Uh, I don't know how that works in that anatomically. Spring became the sun. Anyway, I think you got to give Neil credit. He hasn't been on the charts for decades, and he can still sell out the XL. Oh, God, yeah. He's not playing like Mystic Lake or yeah. Hinkley. He's at the freaking XL Energy Center. It's like a sing-along. It's like the That's Bugaboos. Right. And nobody I, I will. Better. I'll give him props. Tickets That's are going awesome. for $220, face value. Not Holy crap. 220 bucks. For $13, you could go see Martin Zeller do the exact same <laughs> yeah. thing. Does a tribute? He, yeah, he does a Neil show all the time. His manager would call me back. He'd come in and talk about it. I can't believe y'all didn't do it with us. So, also last night, uh, Jimmy Fallon, when he does his, uh, where they play with uh, school music instruments. Yes. Oh, yeah. He sat down with, uh, well, you'll guess the song here. Nice. Uh-huh. I know it, and I can't even think of what it is. Oh, holiday! Oh, he's with Madonna. Oh, and they're doing this song with just instruments you would have at a grade school. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love it. It's way better. Rusty, can I have your permission to play a little uh, Will Ferrell as Neil Diamond? I don't mean to Will Ferrell it. does a new one. Oh, he does the best. It's like 25 seconds. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's hear it. By the way, we're going to go live to Augusta here coming up in a couple minutes. Listen, I was just hanging my agent. 
agent over the side of the Brill Building and had Saturday Night Live on my Watchman. And I heard what you said and came over. Wait a minute, what, what happened to your agent? He'll be fine. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, well. yeah, Neil. Now. <laughs> He that doesn't the, sing. That wasn't my favorite part. My favorite part <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I tried to pull up on you. My favorite yeah, part, he does, amazing. He, he does this. He goes, you know, old Neil spends a lot of time on the road. <laughs> the only thing that gets me through is hardcore, barely legal teenage pornography. Oh, <laughs> my God. That's, that's my favorite. Uh, well, welcome, everybody, to the Twin Cities Hit Show. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm Rusty Gatenby. I'm Courtney McLean. I'm Charles Lewis. And we Alex. have several... Things happening. We have uh, a couple so of guests. Happening. We have a guest in studio besides Sean right now. Yeah. Chuck, why don't you introduce our Joanna Balloon? Joanna Broken Balloon. Broken Mike Improv. Good morning. Yes. Are you liking the weather? It's beautiful. <laughs> get right up on the mic. Get up right up on the mic. Off my get mic. into that mic. <laughs> and then uh, coming up in about five minutes, we're going to go live to Augusta for the Masters. Jim Suhan's down there. Lucky guy. And Les Kirkendall just walked in. And then in we have too. another we guest have coming in. Full studio we have today. a rotate. This gray duck, gray duck here in the uh, studio. Right, yeah. yeah tag Please. out, tag out. What just happened? <laughs> Someone, everyone's looking at each other, going, "Someone talk, please." Somebody talk. Somebody talk. Hi, Les. How's it going? Get uh, up right on the mic. Okay. Um, all I have to say is it's snowing outside. Really, Minneapolis? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I know. Les lives in Los Angeles. Like He's like, Christmas. "What the fuck is this?" Everywhere you go, I, woke up, I was like, "There's stuff coming from the sky. <laughs> what is it?" Oh, that's <laughs> stuff, all right. <laughs> So you're you're not from Minnesota? No, no, not at all. Where are you from? Uh, I now live in Los Angeles. How much snow do they get there? Oh well, we're in, <laughs> we're in a lovely drought at the moment. Yeah, yeah. so get... you don't get any what kind of precipitation. Oh water. yeah, they're gonna they're starting to ration water and stuff. Oh, it's getting serious. Yeah, I yeah. know. Well, take some snow back with you. I will. Yeah, right, please take it. Up. Buckets. They're also rationing Botox. So we got lots to talk about on the show today. Coming up here in just a couple of minutes, uh, we will be talking to Jim Suhan, the uh, Star Tribune uh, dude who's a lucky guy. I don't think it's snowing at the Masters right now. In I Austin, Texas, or Minnesota? Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Augusta, Georgia. Austin, Texas. <laughs> oh, Courtney. <laughs> What's I don't even I don't even play golf ball, and I know I know it. I know, I know where it is. <laughs> but let's uh, talk about it with our guests here. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk. To, who should we? we let's Wait, draw straws. Let's start with Joanna. Everyone's okay, looking at you. All right. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Courtney. Joanna and I are neighbors. It turns out. We are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Down in the southern suburbs yeah. below oh. the river. Why did Joanna? Why did I think you lived right around the corner? Oh no, uh, that's where your sister was staying. My sister's your other tattoo sister. store is right around the corner, Got and it. my yeah. sister was staying with my other sister. Yeah, yeah. All right, literally. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us what you do. Tell us about Broken Mike Improv. Uh, it's a improv group that uh, started with Huge Theater. Um, mm-hmm. I think you're familiar with that, Courtney. I sure am. Yeah, I Heck sure yeah. do. Heck Love yeah. Huge Theater. <laughs> huge Theater is fantastic. It's a great group of people. <laughs> is it a big venue? Uh, well, it's uh, almost as big as the. This capacity of this room here. Nice, <laughs> nice. So it's long. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's packed. Uh, and uh, we do local performances. Uh, we've worked in at Hamlin and uh, with Fearless Labs. We'll be at Honey here next week and just really enjoy kind of exploring unscripted theater, we like to call it. Mm-hmm. Is there like a competition between the different improv groups going on here? Actually, one just wrapped up. It was a Troika competition. And What uh, does that mean? That, that means uh, they had... Uh, Trios that worked together and did kind of a bracket system and oh, competed against each other for votes. Yeah, oh, it was a lot cool. of fun. And you had uh, your it was own, like March Madness for improv. Yeah, you had your yeah, own March was. Madness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What the hell was that, Sean? <laughs> Sean is floating around the studio, <laughs> yeah. continuing to videotape, snap photos. I was to tag did you just try and get a photo up her skirt? What did you do there? <laughs> yeah, because I'm wearing a skirt. <laughs> that is so not appropriate. <laughs> You're not wearing well, anything. We told Jim uh, Suhan we'd call yeah. him at 945. Mm-hmm. He's down there at uh, the beautiful, I'm sure it's not snowing in Georgia. Did you see any of the... Should uh, I call him? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's give him a call. This is the music I always associated with golf coverage when I was a kid. This music would come on and be like, you're looking live at the beautiful Augusta, Georgia, the Masters. I'm Rusty Gatenby. Or Austin, like Texas. Love boat to me. <laughs> no, this is golf coverage. Oh. Do you golf? I do not. Because they have beautiful golfing out there. Oh, it sounds like we are connected. Hey, Jim, are you there? I'm I'm here. Are you there? We are. I'm playing uh, what I 
I, I'm playing what I always considered the music that uh, I would hear with uh, golf coverage back in the day, the uh, Love Unlimited Orchestra theme. Did you ever hear that when you were watching golf? Well, that's, that's for sexy golf. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, it's... Which, no- is a, which really is an oxymoron. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? Now they got, uh, you know, ripped guys out there in their tight little golf pants. And There's, moving well, real I guess, slow. Okay, you talked me into it. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like down there, Jim? Because it's snowing up here in Minnesota. Oh. It is overcast. So it's only like in the 80s right now. It's only. probably going to rain this afternoon. They're probably going to have some thunderstorms, which is going to create a little havoc with the uh, with the tournament. But right now it's kind of overcast, nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just heard that it was snowing back home before, before you guys called me. Yeah. I, I feel that, uh, believe me, I feel for you. I'm not, I say that with no sarcasm. I feel for you. It's, uh, mm. it's awfully nice to have. So were you able to uh, see Tiger Woods and uh, Lindsey Vaughn oh, yeah. walk, walking around the course? I saw Lindsay up by the clubhouse. I didn't see her by the course yesterday. Uh, sometimes she walks with them, sometimes she doesn't. Tell you what, I mean, I've been covering the tournament off and on now for 10, 11 years. I've never seen crowds like this. And they, you know, they've always been famous for restricting the crowd size and wanting it to be kind of a pleasant experience for everybody. Yeah. Uh, I, it, it's packed. It's packed around Tiger. It's packed around players you've never heard of. <laughs> so I don't know if Lindsay's actually out there walking these. It's hard to get from one hole to the other right now. I had a. I got into an argument with a buddy uh, during Super Bowl. I said it's got to be tough to be Tiger Woods uh, dating Lindsey Vaughn because her sport is far more difficult than golf. She's sliding down the side of a mountain at eighty miles per hour. How can Tiger come home and cry? I missed a putt. She'd be like, "Yeah, I almost broke my leg." Right? Uh, wrong. No sport <laughs> ever invented. Uh, Lindsey Vaughn is trying to control her speed, but the speed is built in. She's sliding on a slick uh, surface down a hill. We can all go down a hill. She's just trying to do it uh, faster and more artfully than the rest of us would. These rest would be... But I can go fast down a hill. I just die at the bottom. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. yeah, that's she... the thing is that the risk of death with skiing is more than golf, so hence... If I was Lindsay Vaughn, I'd be sport. like, shut the hell up, Tiger. Don't you... Oh, well, you didn't say it's more difficult. You said, you, if you had said more dangerous, of course it's more dangerous. If yeah. you're talking about more difficult, yes. no sport that's ever been invented is harder than golf. Well, don't tell that to Jack Nicholas. He, he can still hit holes in one. Uh, well, yeah, that is amazing. Uh, and that's, that's the amazing thing. It's the guys who, who get it, who have that swing. You watch, you know, you watch videos of Rory McIlroy when he's three years old, and he has basically had the same swing he has now. You watch Jack Nicholas out there who you know, can't hit the ball out of his shadow anymore and is old and infirm and admits it. <laughs> And he can still make a hole in one on a par three. It's uh, I don't know how these guys do it. You, are you going to be doing your show from down there this afternoon? Uh, no, I'm going to do one tomorrow with Sean. Uh, I think 10 a.m. I'm going to do a live hour from from the Masters, kind of setting up the weekend. I'm right now since I've been out of town, I've been posting some twins interviews that I did when I was in spring training. Doug Minkiewicz, Tom Kelly, uh, uh, Gene Glynn, first first ever Minnesota for basketball, is the latest one to go up. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be a long season with the Twins, isn't it? Oh, my God. Even well, I've been watching that. Well, yes and, <laughs> yes and no. If you want to say they're not going to be a good team, that's fine. Uh, you know, nobody really expected much out of them. When they lost Santana to the suspension, I went from thinking that this is going to be kind of a transitional year where they win 80, 82 games to thinking, okay, it's another year where you're lucky to win 75, 76. But don't base your judgment on a three-game series. Okay, the, the 91 Twins start off like 3-9 and nine or something like that. Hmm. Uh, there are good teams around the majors who have had bad first series. If, they, if this were the NFL season, they'd be late in the first quarter right now. Okay, so you, you, if you want to make your judgments on the Twins being lousy, you can, you've got plenty of ammunition, but don't <laughs> base it on, don't ever base any judgment in baseball off three games. Fair. All right, fine. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> So Lindsey Vaughn is dating Tiger Woods. I'm still processing that. <laughs> I did, first I heard of that. You got to catch up there, China. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's hot. But, and the, the amazing thing is when you see see them like walking together. I mean, Tiger's obviously ripped, and he's been ripped for a long time. I think Lindsey Vaughn can kick his ass. Oh yeah. Oh god, yeah. Totally. She, she is. Uh, she is. She looks more physically imposing than Tiger does. <laughs> well, and and Tiger's a, a non-factor in this tournament, right? Who's who's on to win? The Masters this weekend. 
Well, coming in, Rory McIlroy was everybody's favorite. Uh, he's won two majors in a row. He's going for the career grand slam. He'd be the second youngest ever to win it. He's the best player in the world. Uh, but he didn't have a great first round. He shot 71. He's Jordan Spieth is the obvious current. Uh, he's both the leader and the favorite. He, he made it, he's at nine under now after three holes today. So he's got a uh, he's got a four shot lead over the entire field right now. He's he'd be the he's, he's, I think the second youngest Masters winner ever behind Tiger. He's playing great, but we got a long way to go. Uh, you know, two bad holes can change everything. But but speed, you know, if you were running to Vegas now to place a bet, you bet on speed. All right, I'll do that then. <laughs> what about uh, Bubba Watson? I love the name Bubba. Um, yeah, or, or as the English uh, golfers here say, Bubba, which I love. Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Uh, he is. He's got the ability to win here anytime. He, this is the perfect golf course for him. It's. It's a golf course where he feels completely com- comfortable. Uh, you know, he's, fr- he's from the South. This is always his goal to win here. He's won two of the last three. He's he's in contention. Uh, he's he's got a shot. You know, right now with, with speed being, you know, five shots ahead or whatever. I mean, he's got to come back to the to the pack before anybody else is really a contender. Uh, Spieth's right. going to have to mess up at some point for the rest of the field to have a chance. Hey, Jim, I don't know, is there an over-under going on, but is there an over-under for uh, Tiger Woods to have come out for having sex with his caddy and Lindsey Vaughn to attack him with a golf club? Okay, you're going to have to run that by me again. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, let's just no. not. Let's just no. not. <laughs> You'll no. have to forgive, Chuck. We do every day. Uh, <laughs> not really. So uh, have a good time down there, Jim. Do you need me to shovel your driveway before you get back? <laughs> Uh, well, you, you know, I would pay you the going rate. Right. Let's put it that way. Nice. Well, I already have your autograph photo, but I'll take another. Which, which, which is nothing. Yeah, I was just saying. All right. uh, I don't have a driveway, but if you want to, you know, shovel somebody else's driveway and do it for me, I, I, I no. really appreciate that. No, I'm good. All right. Have fun down there. Thanks for joining the uh, Twin City Sit Show again this morning. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks. See you, See you Jim. Bye. So good. At least it wasn't bright blue skies yeah. down there. Just I don't screw want him. those people. <laughs> he's eighty. <laughs> Suck it, golfers. It's always a weather competition here. But he's right. I mean, if they have thunderstorms moving in, like all those incredible storms from yesterday, yeah. mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to golf out there if there's thunderstorms. This could be a fun tournament. <laughs> Ow! This could canceling be the tournament. Oh come on! Oh. All right. So uh, thank you to Jim Suhan. It was nice just to check in with him. All right. Yeah. So uh, before we take a break, you, uh, what? Do you, where can we see your work? Joanna. 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 <laughs> Joanna. At the huge theater, but do you have yep. stuff coming up? We do. Um, Fearless Labs is celebrating their second anniversary oh, as a wow. production group. Nice. And they've invited us to be part of their second anniversary show. And that's at Honey, which is the space below Ginger Hop. And it should be a great show. It's us. There's uh, going to be some other stand-up. There's going to be some improv. And... Uh, it's definitely something that you're going to want to check out. Support when, what's local the comedy. Date? That's on Tuesday. On Tuesday. On the 14th, Tuesday. When? Yep, yep the, April yeah. 14th. Day that's before us, tax seven. days. Yeah, Ooh. so, you know, you're going to be up pretty late anyway, so come on out and see us. I am tweeting that right now. And Fantastic. you sent us some links. We'll get up there, too. Oh, wonderful. So. Oh, okay, excellent. All right, well, let's take a break, and then we'll regroup, and then we'll come back, and we're going to have fun, right? Is that what we're going to do? That's all we Maybe. do is have fun here. Maybe. Let's see. Hey, hey, Joe. Are you down with having fun? Let's do that. Let's have some fun. <laughs> yes. All right. There's a positive yes there. We'll be right back. The Twin uh, Cities yeah, Hit right Show up. with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. We'll be right back. Don't let your computer problems drive you mad. We are Mac Men, Minnesota's premier tech consultants and problem solvers for Macs, mobile devices, troubleshooting, training, and much more. No more dragging your computer all over town because we come to you. We love making house calls to your home or small business. Mac Men. Call 612 345 8005. The Alive and Social Network is alive and growing. From the best in sports, music, movies, and beer, Alive and Social is what all the cool kids click on. Featuring characters like Radio Rebel Jeff DeBay, Star Tribune pundit Jim Suhan, Unfiltered, and television veteran and handsome man, 
Rusty Gate movie. You can also taste the Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. Join the band with live band karaoke night from legendary O'Gara's in St. Paul and the live music showcase from Shamrocks. Yes, a live and social network does indeed rock and roll. The Jeff DeBay Show, Jim Suhan Unfiltered, The Rusty Gatenby Review, The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly, Live Band Karaoke, and Shamrock's Live Music Showcase. Join the fun. Be alive and social with the Alive and Social Network. The term foodie can sometimes come across as a tickle pretentious. BT and Lydia are here to demystify the term and reclaim it for the sake of good food. Their weekly podcast brings in fellow foodies and culture creators from the Twin Cities to talk about all things food. Find this duo only on the Alive and Social Network. You're listening to the Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Say it three times fast. We just dare you. Ah, oh, crackling rules that get on board. For the grandmas. Nice. Gonna ride what? Till there ain't no Doing it for the grandmas. Neil Diamond yeah. is in concert this weekend, Sunday night, at the XL. We, you missed him at the l- earlier. I'm saying I'm impressed that he can still sell out oh, yeah. a stadium. Yeah. My entire knowledge of Neil Diamond is from Martin Zeller. I'm not kidding. I've never heard Neil Diamond much. But Martin Zeller, I haven't heard him play this one, though. Who's Martin Zeller? Coincidentally, um, wearing oh, his T-shirt. But a, he's the uh, lead singer for the Gear Daddies, but he has a solo career, oh. and he does these shows that are awesome that pack it in that are all Neil covered. It's called Neil. I don't know where he came up with the name, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 an amazing show, and they pack it in. It's just a sing-along. All right, screw Neil. Whatever. <laughs> so, uh, so we're on with Les Kirkendall, who is a uh, storyteller based out of Los Angeles. Um, I've been friends with Les since 2006, since my very first uh, Minnesota Fringe when I was living in New York City. And do you remember we were in Barbette and we were we were so frustrated with the the service. Although it's, that was oh, that's right. eight, that was nine years ago, so uh, so I'm sure they've gotten better. But we were like, we're all we're gonna go coastal, sure. coastal, right? or they still suck, is what yeah. you said. Yeah, or they, yeah, whatever. I don't know. No, they might be a sponsor. Who knows? Also, you know, Kim uh, and her BLB. Anyway, we love you, Barbette. Well, yeah, we love you, Barbette, and all of the, it's all good. All of that whole uh, uh, empire of restaurants in this town. Uh, that's anyway. a fascinating title to me, storyteller. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Ah, uh, well, um, it, it means I tell stories. Okay, good. So, <laughs> hey, all right. Les, I, will, I will tell you what it means. Les, Les has about five or six or seven. Like nine. Nine solo shows that he, an hour long, that he has written that about your life, right? They're all yeah. autobiographical. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, well, what and, the hell's so amazing about your life? Yeah. Oh. Well, Dick. well, he's a gay black man. Exactly. What, in America. In America. Um, and so like one of your, sh- one of your shows that I remember a lot is uh, Christmas in Bakersfield. Yes. Okay. Wait, oh, go ahead. You oh, go. I, yeah. So this is the, my boyfriend brings me home to meet his family. My boyfriend is, is white. Um, and so his family knew that he was bringing home a man, but he forgot to tell them that he was bringing home a black man. <laughs> To Bakersfield. Have you guys right. heard of Bakersfield? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard it's of it. The armpit, Very diverse. The yeah. armpit of California, yes. basically. <laughs> and these are right-wing Republican... So they had just fully accepted that he's gay. Now they had another thing to deal with. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. We can deal with you being gay, but he's black. Come on. Oh, no. That was a bigger deal. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. it. yeah. Yeah. Did you come in playing this song? And I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm blacker than black, and I'm black. That would have helped. Oh yeah, start the conversation. Soften the blow. <laughs> so how did it go? How did that go? Well, that was ten years ago. Yeah. So you know, oh my we're gosh. still together. I know. Oh, you are. are? Oh, ten and a half. Ten and a half years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, you and I have known each other for almost a decade. That oh yeah. Kind of 
trips me out oh, a yeah. lot. So, but then you also have another show about your struggles with alcoholism called Drink, yes, Drink, Drink, Drunk. Drink, Drunk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And what is your what is your latest? So you're here for the AWP. Can you please tell me what that means? I should know. Actually, I'm here. Okay. I'm here for the American Comedy Writing Convention, right. which is tomorrow. But since I'm here, I decided to go to the AWP, mm-hmm. which is the American Writers something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> we should P. really look at that. American <laughs> Writers. <laughs> you're an improv. Yeah, you're the improv. You do something. Improv with P. What would it be? Uh, production. Oh. Oh, okay. I was just hoping for something. Association I was going to say puppies. It's yeah. the Association of Writers and Writing Programs. Okay. Uh, so I guess they didn't want to say A dubs, dubs, P. <laughs> anyway. Why not? It sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, th- thanks, Rusty. Thank you. <laughs> um, anyway, so you so the American Comedy Writing Convention, and then you're doing some performances around town. Yes, I've already done one, and then I have one coming up with the fabulous rock star storytellers on Sunday. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. There's something called rock star storytellers. Yes, um, I'm one of them. Wow. Yeah, so stand back. Courtney, yeah, you should get there, involved in some art stuff if you get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there, we're a storytelling group that's been around since November of 2007, and we do uh, now we do bi-monthly shows at Bryant Lake Bowl. Um, but we, we're doing monthly for a while, and it's it's like a fixed cast of storytellers, and we bring stories every month about our lives or fiction stories or whatever we choose. What makes a good story? Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, as a... I th- I, personally, I think what makes a good story is something interesting, first of all, something with a conflict, but a conflict that can also be relatable. And um, I'm sure Courtney can back me up on this, too, mm-hmm. because I've been seeing a lot of one-hour storytelling shows. And I think it's important that a story have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yes. Because I've been seeing a lot of storytelling shows lately where... The person goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on, and we're done. So mm-hmm. yes, a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and an interesting end. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's uh, you know what g- makes a good story. I think sometimes a twist, unexpected right. things. Um, I really think anything that tugs at the heartstrings or anything that makes you feel anything or makes you think. Yeah. Yeah. Rusty, I can probably answer that. What makes a good story is really good pictures. <laughs> <laughs> a picture tells a thousand mm-hmm. words, so yeah. you're not. So- Wrong, Chuck. Yeah, so you everyone guys, shut up and show me a picture. Is... <laughs> right. But you know, and I, honestly, though, I think that part of it is is though making it relatable because even like my show, Christmas in in Bakersfield. Yeah, you know what? I'm in a room full of of Caucasian people. Mm. I hate but, them, right? <laughs> but you know, <laughs> um, and so yeah, maybe you can't relate with being a gay black man going home to meet your partner's family. But everybody has a family. Everybody everybody but, has in-laws eventually, you know, and you've got to deal with that. And so. also, though, you have a story and you're presenting in front of people that maybe don't know your perspective right. on things. And so I think that makes a good story, too, is when right. you can learn something. But, Joanna, as an improviser, I mean, y'all are telling stories. You're making them up off the top of your head. And not only that, we work a lot with storytellers when we do things like Harold's and Armando's, yeah, which I think true. you've been part of, too. Absolutely, um, at yeah. Show X at Huge. Harold's and Armando? Yeah, so, that's, we get an opportunity to work with somebody that does great storytelling and they tell a portion of their story and then improvisers come up and uh harold's that's fun harold's a, oh you haven't done it it's that, a lot that of sounds fun. like a lot of fun it is harold's and armando's are style they're different styles of improv they're like improv ah. structures mm-hmm. and an armando is where somebody tells a story and then right and then right. the improvisers mm-hmm. improvise uh different scenes based on that story and based on it like maybe they just take a word and complete mm-hmm. com- uh make a completely different world uh, you know, and it's a, su- always surprising to see what other people pull out of your stories mm-hmm. right. that, uh, does that sound maybe cool. doesn't you didn't know it would really touch somebody, and wow, all of a sudden it's a whole scene about this phrase. Yes, yeah, you should get in one of those shows next time. I can probably make that happen. Oh, oh yeah. hey, connections, connections networking <laughs> right on the twins is hit show. <laughs> Um, so yeah. Did you ever listen to Paul Harvey? And he would have, and now you know I did, the rest yeah, the, of the story. The funny thing is, I grew up. I grew up in um, in Madrid, and so we only had one English speaking um, radio station. It was the Armed Forces Stations. So I grew up listening to Paul Harvey. And he, interesting. He, he, how did he rate as a storyteller? I mean, that was his bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the time, I didn't know anything different. Yeah. But, but yeah. I, I he would always that. save the surprise nugget for each story. 
And she was his daughter. And now you know the rest of the story. Good day. <laughs> yeah. Do you hey? who who do you have who do you listen to or who, what storytellers do you absolutely love that maybe people would know? You know what? I listen to I've I've started working with the moth mm-hmm. and I've started touring Excellent. with the moth main stage. Oh fabulous. so through the moth and just like meeting people and listening to the moth, it's just open. You it's guys are throwing open, words out I've never yeah. heard. What the yeah, hell is moth? Okay. The, the moth. The moth. The moth. A uh, radio hour is on NPR. Oh, okay. All right. What's NPR? Can I? Can I take? <laughs> oh, what's can radio? I take? What's radio? Can I take this back a bit? The moth is a storytelling slam night that started in New York City at the Puerto Rican at the New York Cafe, and so basically, what happens is people put their names into a hat, and then. And and that's where it was born, and now it's become a big thing where they have huge stars telling uh, telling stories on big stages. Huge stars, like, like no, they do. Like, yeah, like the like night that Mo- be- Moby and uh, like when I, I saw Cheech from Cheech and yeah. Chong uh-huh. and huh. like Molly Ringwald. Mm-hmm. Oh, all um, right. When I um, I I go on I tour with them sometimes, and so like the last. Uh, show that I did out of town with them um, the late Taylor Negron was on mm-hmm. the stage so it's uh, it's like known people yeah oh yeah definitely known people by all by all different kinds of yeah. people so hmm. and 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 there's also a podcast for the moth that you right. can listen to and you can subscribe to through right. iTunes and you there are just amazing okay. stories of of people just like t- telling their hearts on stage, and it's so moving and well, so humorous. The TED Talks have become very popular. Yeah. Yeah. Would they qualify as storytellers? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but the TED Talks are always more educational, but they include stories. They can include right? stories, yeah. though. Yeah, I guess. You know, yeah, because I've heard some mm-hmm. nice tomato, fifteen tomato. minute stories. Yeah, mm-hmm. or put it this way: the ones that are really good and that are really interesting and stand out and get notoriety always have a story the person tells mm-hmm. a story of why they feel the way they feel and mm-hmm. it, that story those are always element. the more interesting ones yeah and definitely. a story i mean story makes good radio too you know it's like we read these little yeah little articles and those are little stories too yeah, they're just well, fun th- little articles yeah i think going way back supposedly a person like mark twain would get mm-hmm. up on Absolutely. stage and be yeah. a storyteller and yeah. do a live performance oh right oh my god way yeah. way back you have people gathered around the fire in the cave and and Telling their stories and painting their little oh, things. I remember and, that. Yeah. <laughs> and to answer your question, I think the most interest now thinking about it, I think the most interesting storyteller I've ever seen, I saw Eddie Izzard at oh, the Hollywood yes. Bowl. Yes. And he, I would I think he At the Hollywood Bowl. Wow. That's yes. a big crowd. Yes. Yeah. Huge. And and he he like sold it out. He's uh yeah. And he's I I think that was like the best storyteller and telling and, and show Eddie, I've ever seen. Eddie Izzard is is technically a stand up comedian, mm-hmm. but but, but it's storytelling. But he it's does storytelling. Yeah, he does storytelling. That's what. Well, it wasn't that uh, Whoopi Piper Goldberg's Piglia. bit when she started? Whoopi Goldberg wasn't she basically telling stories? Yeah, yeah. she was a solo yeah. performance. Yeah, she was mm-hmm. a solo performance artist. So uh, first. she would become characters. Is that part mm-hmm. of? Do you do that as well? I do not, but. Um, but that's just not my style. But I mean, that's definitely there are people that do. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. You know, there's people that like morph into characters and tell the story as well, the Lily character. Lily Tomlin Absolutely. for years mm-hmm. ran her oh, one yeah. woman show with uh, storytelling and doing different characters. That's yeah. very true. I do a scary gangster, Shane. <laughs> that's my character, Shane. <laughs> I do it. Hey, I do a, sc- yeah. Check this out. My, this is my uh, depressed, despair filled uh, middle aged guy. Let's see? <laughs> <laughs> it's very believable I know I'm totally know. buying it I'm, I'm in character like... the entire show <laughs> Wow Well, should we skip along to some uh, dead news of the day And sure. Courtney stuff And you guys chime in with your own opinions and such yes. You're excited about uh, Game of Thrones <gasps> Do you guys watch Game of Thrones? I, okay, I have finally taken a sip of the Kool-Aid mm. And I've gone in and I'm hooked And I'm Where? in I'm only on season one though But I'm like <gasps> Where are you in season one? I I'm Okay I, I hate oh, to admit dear. it They They just threw the little kid out the window So I'm at the beginning <laughs> but, Oh okay. I like so this you show just, already Yeah I literally just started one. But what happened And, and my You just t- threw the little kid out the to window my, To my boyfriend's chagrin Oh wait that's the end of the first 
episode. But but I'm in. <laughs> no, but that's why I said I just sipped it. Sip. But right, I just sipped it. Isn't the first scene of that episode like some of the most scary TV you've ever yeah. seen? Yeah, I was so freaked out. I'm all I can't watch it. Anyway, uh, I'm, how many seasons are there? Because so I need to catch up. We're as well. sixty-two. We're yeah. starting. We're starting the fifth season uh, on Sunday. Fifth this fifth season starts. Yeah, how on many Sunday. episodes per season? Ten. Ten. So Not I've, much. It's, I've, a, it's extremely... I've got like 40 episodes to catch up. Oh, then. my God. You have to listen you, to that many of our podcasts as well. You will bang it out. You will bang it out in a weekend, yeah, That's dude. what she said. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Chuck. Uh, uh, because I need to catch up, let's have uh, Key and Peel explain uh, Game of Thrones, okay, show. thank you. Yo, what's up? Game of Thrones, though, dog. Yo, you all caught up? Bro, I totally been watched that whole thing last night, dog. Yo, it's cold blooded up in Westeros, dog. They killed my nigga Ned. Ned Stark. <laughs> you ain't seen that one coming, did oh, you? Nigga, hell no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh my uh-uh. God. I mean, my man was just there, right? Ooh. And he talking about, he got down there in the yeah. thing. Like, bliss. Sing. And then I was like, I ain't worried. They gonna kill my boy Ned Stark. Slip. And then plop. I was like, Oh! Yo, I told you they cold blooded up in there. And then Boiler I was like, alert. but that's okay because I still got my Is this nigga. Big Dave Navarro. Big Dave Navarro. This is based on a YouTube yeah, video. That dude picked up some molten gold, <laughs> poured it on niggas' heads. <laughs> <laughs> and he killed him, right? I mean, he big like Hercules and everything. Yeah. I'm like, you can't kill Cod Drago's with a paper cut. And in fact, this scratch him on there. Scratch. So he got straight killed. But just, yo, but you know what my favorite character is? I have no character idea is, what they're talking about. About, but it's hilarious <laughs> to listen to. You gotta watch this no, I'll be like, yeah. this on Khaleesi's door. But what about Khaleesi's? Straight up with them dragons. And <laughs> <laughs> Khaleesi's all like this. And then we talk about <laughs> 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 just straight roasting goats. Yo! Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, and that's when they start killing characters left and right, dog. After what? Okay, all right. right. This is Khaleesi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I've seen. Oh, yeah. okay. I've seen uh, kill, kill, parts of the first kill, season. Kill. That was a four for one. Dog. So one this, this, straight four for one. this has got to be based on this YouTube video that came out uh, right after, spoiler alert. Red Wedding? Spo- no, 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 before that, uh, when Ned Stark dies in the first season. Spoiler alert, sorry, okay. everybody. We just told you we haven't seen the first I know, but this is this is what these guys are talking about. And there's a YouTube video of these black dudes who are freaking out like this, and it was a real thing. Oh, that's and, funny. Yeah, so well, I these, think that's For Key and Peele, it's their characters that are valet, and they like, uh, mm-hmm. they've like they they've done several bits, these oh, valet yeah. guys. Oh, okay, all right. I gotta well, maybe I'm just They're a big that. Liam Neeson fan. You gotta yeah. watch it. So, yeah, so the fifth season starts, and this is, uh, according to Time, Game of Thrones is the most pirated show. For some reason, I'm having a hard time scrolling right now. Oh, it's the, officially the most pirated show worldwide. Mm-hmm. So, Well, yeah, my, my son, who's in college, he's a mm-hmm. senior, he said, oh, yeah, we're going to watch Game of Thrones. I go, you don't have HBO. Huh. How are you seeing this? Mm-hmm. So through some nefarious mm-hmm. means... Mm-hmm. My nefarious. nefarious means college son who's in, the captain of the lacrosse team. In Evil. 2015, illegal downloads of the show were averaging 116,000 per day. Ooh. Whoops. That's amazing. Ooh. It's it's such a freaking great show, you guys. I can't wait. Look at there's Khaleesi and a dragon. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's Jimmy Fallon again from last night, Game of Thrones. <gasps> yes. Guys, uh, finally, season five of Game of Thrones premieres this weekend. <laughs> Wow. Everyone here is pretty excited. Room full of Courtney's. So we thought we would do a second way we know how by editing footage from Game of Thrones to the tune of I'm So Excited by the Pointer Sisters. <laughs> oh my gosh. I want to love you. Feel the These are all clips of the show. I want to squeeze you. Please. Ooh. That kills Captain Gert. He not. And if you lose real fun, let it go. I'm so excited. And I just can't hide it. I'm like Rocky Horror Picture Show. I'm about to lose control. And I think I like it. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there you go. Are you excited? That, well, I love that people take time out of their lives to make stuff like that. I mean, I guess it's your job on the Fallon show. Yeah. That's so amazing. Great job doing your job, Fallon. Yeah, great job doing your <laughs> job. Didn't he also, I think he also, Jimmy Fallon, like, danced with uh, the guy who plays Jamie Lannister on his show last night or something like that, too. I oh. saw a clip, and I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they're shaking their hips. So that's what I'm excited about, y'all. Is that it? That's your Courtney bit? Well, that's that, all you got? Yeah, that was my that was my Courtney bit, but uh, if we... I can bring something else up. I'm sure there's plenty of things to talk about. Let's see. Let's see what Jezebel.com has to say. This is the part of the show where Courtney's... <laughs> Living Saint. Yeah, content. <laughs> well, I did just have content and I used it. But now here's some new. Oh, look at that eye roll. Uh, I'm the smartest person on this show. You guys need me. Living Saint Gwyneth Paltrow vows to eat like she's not rich for a week. Oh, oh so is she going to eat you. what, like ramen and? Thanks, you know. Gwyneth. I guess thank so. you. Make her own sandwiches uh, for seven days. Uh, Our Lady of G O O P. I don't know what that means. Will attempt to oh, eat. It's a. It's her website. That's oh, it yeah, is. Oh, okay. E letter. And her store. Goop. Goop. She has a pop up so store weird. in L A. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? A pop up store. Like um. Like you find like a location, like mm-hmm. an empty storefront or something, and you have like a little mini store there for like a limited amount of time. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. What does she sell? Sandwiches. Her, 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 her goopy her things. Dream. And Goop? Her dream. Her like, soul. Oh, Such yeah. a weird name. Um, she sells her dream. She's goopy. Uh, goopy. Uh, this, this could get really uh, weird. Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, uh, so now for sale, duck butter. <laughs> so Gwyneth is going to attempt to eat on a snap <laughs> budget. SNAP is Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Oh. A budget of $29 a week. Oh, right. How long is she going to do it? For seven days. uh, For seven days. For seven days. And, uh, oh, she says, this is what $29 will get you at the grocery store. What families on SNAP, i.e. food stamps, have to live on for a week. And basically what she has chosen is like uh, there's a bag of whole grain brown rice, black beans, some peas, eggs. So uh, her and eggs. her children. So she's going to get yeah. the she's chef. Feed yeah. her kids. Too. Yeah. So this has okay. been done. Is... Have you guys read that book uh, uh, where she lives like a waitress? Oh, for... Nickel and Nickel and Dime. Nickel and Dime. Yeah. It's yeah. Been, right. Yeah. Well, right. It's yeah. been done, but obviously, like we still have problems with yeah. people being able to eat enough on food stamps. So, so, wait, so it's Gwyneth still is... an issue. Tens of thousands. Of Gwyneth people. is going to get her chef to whip up the twenty nine dollar. Well, maybe. What is her end game? What is she but hoping it, to accomplish well, by this? See. She just wants to lose weight? What is uh, she doing? Well, Movie she's contract? been challenged. She's been challenged by friend Mario Bar- Batali, oh. who, oh. As, who as a member of the food bank for New York City for a, a member of the food bank for New York City board, he's raising awareness to try to keep Congress from further slashing food benefits. He went yeah. to my All high right. school. Oh, really? did Mario Batali did? To my, he, 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 many, many years earlier. Yeah. But yeah, he went to the American School of Madrid. Oh, no shit. I how, forgot. How did you I end up you in, Madrid. in Madrid? My dad worked for the Department of Defense. Oh. And so he You've was, lived in a lot of interesting places, right? I lived in Germany, yeah. London. What's in, the bestest? What's the bestest? The bestest place. Actually, it's a tie between Madrid and Germany and Munich. I lived yeah. in Munich for two years. Oh, yeah. For sure. What, what, why, why did you like Munich? Because I was uh, because I was 18 years old and out of the house and had no <laughs> parents. And you're in Germany. And you could run wild. It could Germany. have been Fargo for all <laughs> you cared. <laughs> true. True. <laughs> the city had nothing to do with oh, your love. Oh, Munich. Except that Fargo was way not even as cool as anything in Germany. Okay, wait a minute. So, okay. Germany, okay. they Munich. shit on each other there. It's the coolest place ever. I, okay, that's Germany Please for money. I heard that incorrectly. I was <laughs> 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 hoping it would just slip under. G- Munich is German for Munich. So, yeah, I thought we were talking about um, Idaho. Oh, really? Yeah. And now you're going to stop the show, too? Yeah. Both of you guys. <laughs> hey, Courtney. <laughs> you know what? You know what? This is improv. It's yes and, y'all. When you co- We support each other. Yeah, we yes, we do. Oh, okay. yes. Right. We artists. Yes. <laughs> Courtney, you look lovely today, by the way. Thank you, right. Chuck. Love That's what you do with your hair. Chuck. I like that, that kind yeah, of ponytail that, thing. That or, sort of just yeah, whip bun. it up. And, it's a bun. Yeah, it's a yeah. kind good, of. Good choice. It makes your eyes pop. Thank you. I think yeah. we need to get another weather report. Live. It's Indy, Nova Scotia. Severe thunderstorms headed towards Arkansas on Thursday, April 9th, 2015. I just love this kid. He's still going. You never even hit Pause. It's just been going the whole time in the back. Oh, no. The whole time. Right, Chuck, you got anything in the world of... Uh... That's a piece of newspaper. Uh-huh. 
I went old school. Did you get, get that off the computer? Yeah, uh, cut it out of my screen. <laughs> wow. Mauer County, Minnesota, police investigate an unusual theft. Police are investigating the theft of about $70,000 worth of bull semen Ew. from a farm in southern Minnesota. Did Gwyneth, was she around? <laughs> Part of her she up to something? <laughs> yes, a storage container with vials of bull semen was taken from an unlocked barn. The theft happened sometime between April 1st and April 7th. Man said the only time he and his hired hand were away from the farm was on Easter Sunday. Those bastards. Easter e- Bunny did each it. Each canister's worth $500. Vials of semen were worth three hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a piece. That's a lot of bull semen. Wow! Yeah, and we spoke earlier of upskirting. There's a recent article. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appeals court on Wednesday. This is out of Madison, Wisconsin. Upheld the conviction of a southeastern Wisconsin man who secretly took photos up a woman's skirt at a grocery store, rejecting his argument that women who wear skirts in public assume the risk that they might be photographed from any angle. Gross! <laughs> You tempted me, you vile woman. Jesse Schumacher was caught secretly taking photos up a woman's skirt in 2013 and was convicted last year of two misdemeanors, disorderly conduct and attempting to capture an image of nudity. He was sentenced to nine months in jail, but he appealed the capturing nudity conviction, arguing that since the woman was wearing underwear, there was no way he could have committed the crime. He also contended that a woman assumes the risk in public that she might be viewed from any angle or vantage point. Now, wasn't that the, uh, there was a case in, what is it, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. where that was upheld, that the guy really? wasn't convicted because of that? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, she was wearing underwear. What so if wait, she wasn't wearing so, underwear? Okay, so guys are just walking around with their crotch that I can just kick. I mean, they have to understand that they can be kicked at yeah, any time in the crotch. My leg just does yeah. this. Yeah. I know. I'm you're sorry. You're asking for it. Yeah. <laughs> you're asking for it by having sensitive no, There's a difference between physical contact and taking artful photos. <laughs> no, there hey, sure is not. And this is well, for you. Yes, there is this is the technical thing. How do you take the pictures? Right. I was going to ask the same thing because yeah. this is before the selfie stick was popular yeah. so this means that he had to like literally reach yeah. down wow he like, wow. he like put his iPhone on a timer and just slid it underneath wow. his he like was an <laughs> expert curler and he's just all <laughs> there's nothing stealth about that I mean he's busted every time yeah. he does that right yeah. well he, this time he was I'll tell you that um, wow yeah. there's nothing attractive about that angle think of the photography it's just a bunch of <laughs> I don't know but <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I've watched some <laughs> porn and like I think people. You've watched porn? Everything. Yeah, I just watched some. Oh last my god! Night. No kidding. Yes. Wow. Okay. What are you? Are you kidding? It's me? always the quiet ones. I would have never suspected. It's always would you? the quiet ones. <laughs> 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 Who would have thought? Well, speaking of porn, there's a new Nicholas Sparks movie out. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. The Longest Ride. Yes. Uh, and it stars Scott Eastwood, who is Clint Eastwood's son. And I don't know if you've seen pictures he, of Scott. He's really he's hot. Stunning. Yeah. He's really okay, hot. you. Two, he's you three, stunning. four, stay out uh, of this. I what about like Brit? He's boring looking. Yeah, what I, about I, Brit? I heard you talk about. Oh him. yeah, oh. yeah. No, no. He's well, he's <laughs> besides Courtney. A lot of the ladies seem to like him. Mm-hmm. He's certainly, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. He's certainly ripped. When he first started out, he did not have the last name Eastwood. He took his mom's maiden name, and his dad was like, "Yeah, I'm, you got to make the breaks yourself." However, now that he's almost thirty. He's mm. now changed his name to Eastwood, and if you Google image him, getting... if you Google image him, he does he takes pictures of himself to mimic almost photos of his dad. There's one where he's got a beard and he's got a cigar. Yes, there and is. And you put them side by side to Clint Eastwood, <laughs> yeah. and they look the same. Yeah. 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 There's black and whites of them, Courtney. Oh, my goodness. We have a video. Uh, Chuck and I got to go interview Scott Eastwood and Britt Robertson, uh, stars of this Nicholas Sparks movie. Alan Alda's in the movie as well. Uh, we got to go interview them, and we posted the video uh, on uh, the website. But if you want to hear, hear the interview? I do. All right. Sure. That's awesome. Okay. Imagine uh, a really sexy guy. Uh, and then Scott Eastwood, because I was in the <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hooked on that one. All right, so don't punch me, but how soon to interviews do they bring your dad's name up? Like immediately, like I'm doing? You're, you're, you're the first, jeez. <laughs> you're the first guy to ever bring my dad up. <laughs> Does it get annoying? I'm sorry. No, no, you know what? Uh... I, uh, I'm really proud of my dad, and he's my hero, so. The goal is pretty simple. Just hang on for eight seconds. 
Do we call this a chick flick? Again, don't punch me. Is it? Nope. There was a lot of ladies in the crowd last night. That's right. I mean, I, th I think it, it does serve the purpose of, of being a, a Nicholas Sparks film, and they're generally known to to serve a woman audience. But um, like Scott said, you know, there's a lot of athleticism and manliness and grit, as he would like to call it. Um, so there's there's stuff for everyone. Yeah, I mean, that was part of the reason they did the film. I mean, I thought it was. I thought it was a, a bigger scope in film than just being a Nicholas Sparks film. Well, and we were talking about the bull riding stuff, and it is pretty intense when I was watching. I'm like, okay, how do they film bull riding for Hollywood productions? Are, are dudes actually flipping yeah. off the bull and getting... Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, guys are getting hurt, guys are bucking bulls. I mean, they really pretty much just did a PBR put on a rodeo every day for about a week. But the guy who was your character, because it, it wasn't you flipping off the bull, was it? Uh, no, 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 I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't me flipping off the wall every like, time. Like, are you going to try and pretend that was you? <laughs> She's like, oh, I want to hear this answer. Yeah, yeah, uh, no. Totally me. Yeah. But then your character, he, some dude has to be in your character's outfit, so he looks like you, and like, okay, no, go out there and then flip off the ball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it wasn't, I, I don't think that, there's no real planning of, you know, when you buck a ball, there's yeah. no planning how you're going to go down. So anyway, when you if, when you check out the video, uh, you'll see that uh, a good quarter of the movie has to deal with this guy being a bull rider. Do you find mm -hmm. cowboys attractive? Uh, not necessarily. I do. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Because <laughs> he's a cow. It's funny. There are cute moments in the film, like she, her character is the you know in a sorority, so he shows up to uh, on the first date with a total cowboy hat and the Wrangler jeans and the cowboy boots, walking through a very Ivy League type set of students. Because he's a badass and yeah. he don't care. And then all the, out of water? all the yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then all the girls in the sorority as he escorts her out, you know, like this throwback gentleman cowboy they're all swooning against the window like oh the sexy that's, cowboy that's <laughs> clever scripting i'm surprised yeah. they went that direction ah. right. wow that's a really well, taking yeah. chances i yeah. was yeah. i was yeah. at the screening i went to i think there was two dudes yeah. there was more ladies than an ellen audience yeah, yeah that's why the dudes <laughs> were there <laughs> it was me, another guy, and a whole bunch of ladies, and they seem to be liking it. So it's not a movie geared for me. The the bull riding stuff was intense, and as a guy who loves movies, that always fascinated me. That okay, your character has to fly off a bull and get hurt. Mm -hmm. How do you film that? I mean, who's the stuntman? <laughs> like a stuntman. Who's yeah. got the short straw of flipping? But it's an actual bull, and I guess what he said is they just overshot and overshot and waited for an actual bull riding incident to happen. They were, well, there we wow. go, got it. It's, uh, it's yeah, crazy. I you can't you can't fake somebody mm -hmm. getting trampled. Yeah, as well as somebody <laughs> actually getting trampled. Yeah. Right. Just hang wow. out and wait. They just for that don't. To yeah, he said they just shot like a week's worth of rodeo, and sure enough, oh good, <laughs> that guy, he got hurt. <laughs> all right, got the shot. Sorry for you. Oh wow. <laughs> I think they just used Beastie Boys footage from all their videos with mannequins flying around. You know, with your interview, what I was yeah. most surprised at was uh, Scott's voice. Did anyone expect him to be really his dad's voice? Oh, it's like a normal boy voice. Yeah, yeah. it's a normal yeah. boy voice. Yeah, and he's disappointing. He's. I expected him <laughs> to be taller because I've I've interviewed yeah. Clint and Clint is about six one. He's kind of shrinking now, <laughs> but uh, Scott Eastwood is like five ten. Oh, yeah. oh really? Yeah. And normal. about a buck seventy two. And when yeah. he, he said he was doing like push ups in the. Uh, hotel room before he came down to mm -hmm. talk to us oh, said nice. i was working out and, you know, and i go oh were you in the gym no i work out in my room push-ups sit-ups i'm like oh me neither <laughs> 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 mean. yeah um in my google image search i was uh impressed by the amount of uh six packs that were happening mm. well we'll link up the video to uh, mm -hmm. our facebook page it's on my facebook page right now and oh, the fabulous. rest of gave me a review facebook page but you'll see he was very nice and they yeah. both have careers that are popping oh, God, as yeah. you'll uh -huh. see she's going to be in another movie a big movie that's coming out this summer tomorrowland with george clooney it's another disney big budget where they <laughs> take their theme park and make a movie uh but this one looks like it might work uh and he just wrapped up an oliver stone film so oliver stone oh. obviously a very talented director mm -hmm. and then he was when also was the tapped he made something what's oh. that yeah i know he was uh, also tapped. He was also tapped to be in the Suicide Squad, the comic book, mm -hmm. a cult mm -hmm. favorite comic book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will Smith's in it, Jared Leto. Oh. And oh, now Scott 
Scott Eastwood. Yeah. So they have some oh, exciting nice. projects that are coming yeah, out. Sounds good. It was uh, just kind of weird because when she, uh, I, I thought for sure she was going to invite me back to a room. That didn't happen. Um, <laughs> she's just an itty bitty little girl. Yeah, she, she's very, is, she was very nice. Yeah, hung out and chatted after the interview. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they they're not that way yeah. when you interview these mm-hmm. Hollywood types. But these kids are still at the beginning kids. of their career. Those kids. <laughs> these little kids. So, so the movie opens today, so I'll be interested to see if uh, if it does well. Nicholas Sparks movies, I mean, they continue to churn them out. Yeah. Typically do okay, except for like The Notebook. He really hasn't had a breakout, you know, $100 yeah. million dollar thing. But, uh, but here's the longest ride. We're keeping our fingers crossed for the longest ride. It was kind of sad <laughs> to see Alan Alda looking so old. He was <laughs> hired to play the oh, old guy. Time. Yeah. You know, I, I always remember him as the uh, the Wiseacre mash guy yeah. with mm-hmm. a full head of hair, and he was yeah. spelt. And yeah. now he's now yeah. he's the old man. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. got to be. What, he's got to be like uh, almost in his eighty. Yeah, yeah, he's got to be close. So. Yeah. But I he was like, in the Korean War. The mash. <laughs> that, was old. that was not a documentary. That was, that was fiction. Oh, fiction. oh, <laughs> oh! Uh, huh. So next week, oh, Monday, right. we yes. have Rod Simons. Rod Simons, Emmy Award winning sportscaster. It's the Twins' home opener on Monday. The weather is supposed to improve. Yeah, look, the sun's already coming out. Oh. Oh. Congratulations, Barry Manilow, married yes. a, secretly married a year ago to his. His partner, Happy his manager, Barry and Gary. Thank you so much, Joanne and Balloon and Les Kirkendall for being on the show today. We'll, we're posting links to your shows and whatnot on our Facebook page. You can check us out all the time, everybody, at TwinCitiesHitShow.com. Let's go make a snowman. Come on. Who wants to do snow angels? Anyone? Yeah. We're also on Twitter. Come on. We're on Twitter Snowball at, fight. at Cities Hit Show, and you can find us on Facebook. I can't smile without you, Courtney. Chuck. I can't smile yeah. Hey, you, Rusty. tonight, T Buckets in Prescott or Somerset or something. I'll be performing stand up comedy in Wisconsin. Did you say T Buckets? T Buckets. It's a bar or something. It sounds like a naughty sex. It thing. does. Sloppy, sloppy. But go there, pay some money, and Post watch it on me our tell page, jokes. Y'all. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a good weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday. It's the Twin Cities Hit Show. 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 Now it all seems like years away. Now you know I can smile without you. It's over. The hit show is over. You've been listening to the Twin Cities Hit Show with Rusty, Courtney, and Chuck. Now go home, unless you're already home.